Take a breath, step outside. Thank you so much for beaming in. And here we go. All right. Yate, welcome. Greetings, everybody. We want to seriously, seriously thank the ancestors that come from these lands, the 19 Pueblos around us. And we also want to thank our future ancestors uh, that are here with us tonight too, namely uh, Dr. Corrine Sanchez and her mother is in the room as well, Kathy. So uh, we'd like to let you all know that Indigenous Ways is more than ever committed to dedicating <laughs> and bridging cultures globally together through any way we can, whether it's in a circle around a fire, whether it's under a tree, whether it's at a lake by the river, in a big city, in a hotel room, at a Starbucks, or on a virtual events platform called Virtual Events Indigenous Ways Talking Circle. So we want to bring people together because we want to drop walls of separation more than ever today because our all, all our blood is red and we are five-fingered people. We have minds that are are rational they can get us in blessings and can get us in trouble so tonight we're really really looking forward to our, our evening our live events also are recorded and archived on our website so if you don't if your friends and family don't see it tonight we have a wealth of historical archives of in, intense 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 indigenous and two-spirit wisdom and you can find that at indigenousways.org virtual events now what's really cool about this i think and i'm pretty excited about this the very first indigenous ways virtual events was kicked off uh by the beautiful elder kathy elder uh kathy sanchez um, who is the mother of uh, Dr. Kareen Sanchez, that it will be with us tonight. And all of that, as Tash was saying, is archived. Today is Wednesday, uh, and uh, on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock Mountain Standard Time now, we have the Wisdom Circle, and on Fridays, we have the concert events honoring our uh, Indigenous, Native American, LGBTQIA uh, performers, uh, so uh, that's what's going to be happening on Friday. And we're so blessed tonight to have very a blessed. very, 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 very favorite person on planet Earth, Dr. Corrine Sanchez. Whoa. Dr. Corrine Sanchez is a powerhouse. She's fearless. She speaks her truth. Mm. And she speaks it in such an eloquent way that she travels all, all over the world on behalf of Table Women United. And what... Table Women United has been able to do over the last 25 plus years is to pull open the rug and what's underneath that rug in our communities and say, let's pull it out, you guys. Let's talk about it, you guys. It's painful, it hurts, but let's bring brothers in. Let's bring sisters in, grandmothers, grandfathers, two spirits, mm -hmm. everybody in, pregnant women, pregnant teenagers, and let's make a path to unity and togetherness and resilience that we always are. And to me, that's what Kareen is all about. Absolutely. So tonight, we're gonna get some wicked words of Kareen. So brace yourself. Buckle up, hold on to your seats, rock it, Kareem, go for it. Let's give it up for Dr. Yay! Kareem Sanchez from Tell Woman United. Woo! Thanks, Kareem. Oh, I love that um, introduction. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for everyone for that is taking time out of your evening to spend um, here with us tonight. And um, as mentioned, my mother, Kathy, Elder Kathy Huenpovi Sanchez is here with me. She's off camera now, and maybe we can coax her um, to come on camera a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, tonight, I am going to be sharing with you um, our, a project, our, one of our newest initiatives in Table Women United, which is our Healing Justice and Radical Hope project, um, which is about radical self-care, community care, and um, healing. And so, um, yeah. And if you have any questions, I am technically challenged at the moment. Um, internet was, has been unstable and I can't really see the chats that are coming in. So I'm gonna depend on Tosh and Elena to read out if questions if you have any. Um, and you're more than welcome to interrupt at any point and ask those questions. Um, and yeah, we'll just see how this story sharing goes um, tonight. And again, I'm honored. Um, 
And just to say, um, I'm really appreciative and I want to lay down respects. If I offend anybody with what I'm saying, um, I'm really doing this so that we can open our minds, hearts, bodies, and spirits to think about um, how we move forward collectively, as was mentioned, as collective humanity um, in this work that we do on ourselves, as well as in our families and in our communities. Um, to bring about that transformative um, power and energy. And so I am going to be doing a short PowerPoint presentation. And I think I can start now, right, Tosh? Yes, yes, yes please. Yes, please. Okay, now let's go. So this, the slide I hope that you're seeing right now um, is, um, you know, the healing, healing justice, our path forward. You'll see this, the, our um, logo, Tail Women United. We're also changing our logo in the next couple of, of months. Um, we've gone through some transformation. And I think as we enter different stages of our life, there are ways to mark that. Um, I'm also transitioning my name. So I'm, I'll share a little bit about my Indian name and then where my current journey is in my life transitions, as well as transitions within the organization itself. So we're 30 years old, Table Women United is 30 years old. We've been doing um, healing transformative work in our, in our community since the late 80s. Um, this organization was founded by women from our community that had a concern about what they were seeing and how they wanted to change and make a difference. And um, it so happens that um, many of those women were my relatives. Um, so my aunts, my great aunt, my mother, as well as the collective voice across um, Tewa communities here. And so our, our current logo and our, our future logo will still maintain this image of the six women um, that you see it's sitting in circle or representing community life. Um, if you look deeper, you'll see the pottery symbol in the back and then the community village, um, as well as the evergreens, which are really used in our prayers and our, in our, and our dances. Um, but the, and in the center is the corn. Um, and the different directions, right? North, south, east, west, above and below. Um, so really representative of a lot of imagery um, and um, spiritual practice and guides that continue to um, inform our work. And uh, my mother is a beautiful artist. She's also a potter and um, an illustrator or a drawer. Um, so this came from her um, and we've digitalized it here, which she does not necessarily like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, that's the way we move in technology right now. Um, but the six women represent the six Tewa speaking communities that exist here in New Mexico. And we're part of the 23 tribal nations um, that also exist here in New Mexico. So 19 Pueblos um, and then the Hickory uh, Apache um, nations and the Diné nation. Um, and so, and the, so just, you know, thinking about how um, all of our indigenous communities that are here. Um, and Tewa, Tewa Women United is a translation from We Aunt Gidimu, um, which is like, we are one, um, you know, and so the translation in English for us was united. Um, and so going and building from there. And I am grateful to the Pueblo PhD program where I was able to get my um, doctorate from, um, graduated in 2015 with um, fellow Pueblo classmates from across New Mexico. And um, really being, I was blessed to be able to share the story and look at how Tay Women United um, formed and the philosophy behind our work. So on this next slide, you'll see, um, I was in Aotearoa, so connection to Elena and her dad and her family and her community, and was out there um, almost 15 years ago, really with the sexual assault and domestic violence programs. And they introduced themselves by their mountain, their water, their people. Um, and so in that respect, um, I have here a picture of the Black Mesa, which is Tunyo Cuyo in our Tewa way. Um, and it's right in my back door, backyard, um, a place to really give reverence and breath to. And in the picture really represents what my mom talks about is the inner and outer, um, the breath, the rain, you can see that, you know, the mist of that replenishing and, and nurturing. Um, so we're, we get our guidance from the cosmos, we get our guidance from our inner being and also from our Naocho um, Cuyo, which is our earth mother. Um, and the next picture, figure number three is the big tree, 
which is a cottonwood tree. And so my Indian name is Ka Peripovi, which is cottonwood fluff. So I was born in June, June 23rd is my birthday and all the cotton fluff is all over blowing. Um, and so really, you know, we are named to emulate those, those relatives um, and what they give in our community. And so really honored. And I was talking about transitions, right? So I am transitioning. Um, I'm at that stage of perimenopause, I guess, early menopause. Um, and so I'm now also taking on another Indian name that was given to me, which is Okua Pepovi, um, which is about um, the flower on the stick of our sacred um, um, deities. And so, um, yeah, so I feel like I'm maturing and I'm shifting and I'm going to be maybe utilizing both and also leaning more into that um, middle realm of experience. Um, and then the figure two is a picture of my nieces. And so um, I'm an aunt um, to my nieces and my nephews, um, my cousins, um, a lot of relatives. And I think they're the light for me. They're the joy. Um, and they also represent the ways that our healing has been allowed to happen in our family, as well as and the work that we're doing and so some some beautiful transformations in that um jessamine who's the baby right here is she's now four years old um and as rambunctious and inquisitive as ever um and really brings that that youthfulness that reminder of how we need to have these energies in our in our lives In Tewa Women United, I've been blessed to really look at, um, for myself, I feel like my journey in Tewa Women United is as this, you know, graduating from high school, um, seeing this circle be formed and these women who are coming into their power and who were um, addressing issues that was impacting them as well as their families and their communities, whether that was their path to sobriety, whether that was their um, addressing violence that was directed at them within their intimate partner um, relationships, or community violence and also societal violences. And from this came um, a trauma healing rock vision. Um, my mother, who I feel is just really connected and the intellectual really, um, I may have gotten my PhD, but she's really the intellectual force um, in my influence, um, as well as other scholars that have come through Table Women United as I was growing up. Um, and so um, Dr. Maria Yellowhorse Braveheart, um, Dr. Eduardo Duran, um, Bonnie Duran, Dr. Bonnie Duran, um, a, and a lot of other women of color, people of color, um, intellectuals that really helped lay the theory. Um, we're talking about the theory, but we were actually living it. And um, how do you integrate that theoretical with the practical, with the action? And I feel we are able to do that within our work at Table Women United. Um, and my mother is always asking for guidance in her sleep space, also hearing from our ancestors and our, our spirit guides. And so this trauma healing rock really came to her in a dream so that we could share about the things that we were learning about in Circle Together, which was historical trauma, intergenerational trauma, individual complex trauma, and how all of that um, impacts us on a mind, heart, body, spirit level, and what the research was saying on a cumulative level. Um, but what we talk about is an exponential growth of that trauma, and the representation within the Trauma Rock exercise is seeing that exponential growth through generations as we're story sharing um, and moving that so that we can have a visual for our young people who may have these feelings of anger, of fear, of um, you know, nightmares and things like that. And so in the ceiling of the rocks in these plastic bags as we go through generational lines is oftentimes sealing in that guilt, that anger and the shame um, that can um, suffocate us, that can um, lead to disconnection and isolation in our families and our communities. Um, and so we have that particular visuals as we talk in our in our programs and so for me the story comes okay sorry my mom's like slow down <laughs> so for me the story comes from this matriarchal lineage of women in my family 
Uh, and so when I share my story within the trauma rocks, is the passing from my great grandmother who you see here, great great grandmother who was Maria Martinez, a very well known potter from our community, uh, a midwife, a healer, um, a very influential woman within her community and outside her community, um, someone who was monolingual um, and then also spoke a little bit of English. And then my great grand, my great grandmother Santana um, Martinez, who is also a potter, um, and my grandmother Anita Martinez. Um, <clears throat> so this really strong lineages of women that were potters, that were healers, um, and that were also influenced by different phases and transitions of um, economic systems, educational systems, wars um, that went through. And then my mother. Um, who you know is um was a teacher in our community retired educator um really connected to my great grandmother my great great grandmother and learning those lessons and seeing um and has been my interpreter for tewa um and tewa values that come as i'm not a fluent speaker of tewa um and really helping to um, also maneuver between the masculine and feminine um, and the energy flows and what that means and also because of her intellect and her interpretations of science and the incorporation in our indigenous knowledge has just been a really powerful force. Um, and then myself as a survivor of child sexual abuse, a survivor of different types of violences um, directed um, at me um, and then my my nieces and um, the, my sister as well, and then Table Women United, where a lot of that was was opening to that healing. Um, and so um, I wanna talk about how this led to, I think our work has always been grounded in um, healing and spirituality, um, our, the strength of our culture, the strength that comes from our community, um, but also with that place of really understanding how, um, systemic ways that we've been eroded in our voice and in our power um, through genocide, through colonization, through a different tactics that have been utilized against us as peoples. Um, and so healing justice is like, how do we incorporate healing within all the movements that we're involved in? And Tailwoman United is a multi-issue organization, which means we focus on environmental justice, uh, reproductive justice, and gender justice. <clears throat> the holistic way of the things that are impacting us as women in our, in our lived experiences today and influence the, our narratives, influences our stories, influences the lenses from which we see. And so um, we were fortunate to um, be doing direct service for sexual assault since the early 1990s. My background is in um, child sexual abuse um, and addressing child sexual abuse, um, sexual violence, um, have developed multidisciplinary teams, have developed protocols on investigations, um, have looked at different healing aspects um, in that particular lens of community, family, and what does accountability and responsibility look like? Um, and our environmental justice work was foundational to our to our being because we're downwind from Los Alamos National Laboratory um, and seeing the erosion to our our land, our air, our water, our relatives, right? Those spiritual energy that exists um, that you, is not really talked about when we talk about contamination and cleanup um, and accountability um, for that from Los Alamos National Laboratory. Um, and then our um, reproductive justice. So we've developed a doula program. Um, we are now training doulas um, in our community. Um, what does that mean as women, you know, for us to be able to talk across the lifespan of our experience as women um, from the violence we may experience to our reproductive um, and co-creation processes, um, not only in our home and our family, but in our intellect and, and other ways that we show up in the world. Um, and really talking about that multiverse, multiplicity of literacies, of presence, of energy, um, and really grateful again to Kathy and other elders that have really grounded us in um, being able to understand that our power and strength is in our mobility and our fluidity. 
So the mobility to move towards um, things that are healthy and well for us and move back in and move back out. The fluidity of power so that we know that our energies as male and female, as these masculine and feminine are really fluid and should move freely. And what is represented in our physical being may not necessarily be the energies that really are represented within, within and without. Um, so really looking at LGBTQ um, inclusivity, diversity, um, and understanding that diversity is really what is a, the strength in our ecosystems is diversity. Um, and so monocropping and these other environmental issues um, and how they affect our community. And also really looking at the interconnectedness um, of our of our being in this world. So we may we may be here in Tewa land, Tewa Toa place being, um, but we're connected to um, others across this globe through the breath and lungs of our Mother Earth, through the water streams, the blood streams, um, and really to understand that our responsibility may be, be here, but the impact is also out. Um, and so talking about justice and healing and what does that mean in this multiple ways that we are um, under attack at times and in this culture of violence. So my mother talks about the culture of violence and looking at the culture of peace. Um, and so our journey now is how do we, how we do we journey through these multi dimensions to touch on that, that um, culture of peace so that we can continue to reclaim that and bring it forward into this moment in time that we're seeing and living in now where we're seeing violences that we thought were already got, gone and passed um, resurfacing around racism and anti-blackness and anti-immigrant, anti-indigenous, um, and how do we move and heal um, and address that? And also um, this anti-woman, right? This misogyny against women, um, the hatred of women in different aspects. Um, and so <clears throat> we undertook this healing journey, um, healing justice, um, we were fortunate to get funding through um, Mutan Violence, the Novo Foundation, um, and this Radical Hope um, grant. And so really looking at what has sustained, sustained us as um, Tewa women, but as indigenous peoples um, through these different phases of history, phases of the story, phases of the narrative, um, and how do we move. And so in this particular initiative, we're looking at um, five circles. And I'll share, um, I'm going to share a little bit of what we're learning from those five circles. And we, we did our first, the, the project is with 20, uh, close to 20 organizations on a local to a national level, um, and also an engaging men and boys circle. Um, so these 18 to 20 organizations that are involved, um, we've had face-to-face -face meetings, circles, talking about what healing means to us, talking about what justice means to us, talking about what self-care is, um, and how do we see that in our work um, that we're doing in our communities, in our on ourselves, and in our families, um, and then really trying to think of like how do we look at this overall um, concept within um, all of these different movements that sometimes do not talk to each other. I think we're getting more and more integrated, um, but as I was doing growing up in the organization, there were really separate funding streams. There were really separate um, circles and groups of peoples that were necessarily working on that. I think we're getting to a lot better place around what we call opere, which is really braiding and inter, um, bringing together um, and strengthening this. So what you see in front of you now is uh, we do graphic documentation and so um, from these circles as we're talking, the, our graphic illustrator, who is this amazing Muslim woman, is um, from New Mexico, is a local um, person from our community. And so she's drawing as our groups are talking. And, and this one is our local partners. So in our local partner circle, we have representation from environmental programs, um, um, reproductive justice programs, um, gender justice programs, um, indigenous programs to um, mainstream programs to you name it. It's a, it's a mix. And we've been working with these different organizations for over 10, 15 years um, and really sharing, kind of talking about like how do we integrate this healing 
um, and I hope that you're reading this. Um, I'm not going to necessarily read through, um, but we 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 um, we were looking for facilitators that could help us co-create this process. We were looking for evaluators that we could co-create with as we're looking at these these different aspects of this journey with us. Um, and so we have groups of facilitators. So we have um, young organizers um, doing young people's organizing out of Boston, which is youth, youth build, um, youth works, um, listening works. Um, and so we have two facilitators from there. Um, we have Becky Masaki, who is a mentor and guide for me and has done a lot of work in gender justice um, from the Asian American um, Islander perspective and has a really wealth was like my mother is just like that person that has done this for across generations across time frames and comes with that really heart place approach um, and then we have together for brothers which is a young men of color organizing organization here in new mexico and so we have facilitators from there um, also helping in this co-creation process um, and also our partners, right? So our partners in these different circles are also co-creators in, in this journey in that they have experience and expertise and that um, we, we learn from each other as we go. Um, and there was no roadmap for us to do this, right? We're trying to, we're trying to figure out like, how do we do this and how do we, how do we look at our work um, and the lens of our work um, with all of these different connections and peoples. Um, so we have North Stars, you know, um, youth work brings to us that all people are good, all people are hurt, and all people can heal. Um, and that really resonated with us because we really believe in that transformative power um, to heal and to transform situations. As survivors, you know, we know that we have these dark experiences and we can take from that um, ways to transform and help others um, open to their healing journey or open to different perspectives. And so again, we really believe in our ability for all of us to heal and that each one of us, whether we have degrees or not, whether we're um, formally trained or not, have that ability to help another heal um, and support them in that journey or open them to that journey. Um, so a guiding questions um, for this work was, um, what is healing justice to you? How might radical self-care contribute to sustainable change? Um, and this was something we've looked at throughout our work as Te Women United in the ways that burnout happens or can happen within organizations, the overwhelm, um, the, the wins that may be long line, long vision. Um, and so how do we continue to maintain that hope? How do we continue to maintain um, that optimism um, that we can reach that place, right? That we can reach that place of healing and unity and collective humanity um, as a whole and recognize each other as sacred beings, regardless of the color of our skin. I don't want to be talking about like melting pot. I want us to really know that that type of relational activity is often hard and challenged as we go through different traumas in our life. And how do we maintain and hold love and possible forgiveness and these other aspects um, in, this, in this way. So, um, you know, so self-care can definitely be yoga and can be bubble baths because I do that, right? Um, but it's also um, a, a deeper journey um, than that. And, and how do we come, in, come into these courageous conversations with multiracial, multicultural people with different experiences um, and share our authentic self and not always armor up um, and shield ourselves, but maintain that, that vulnerability. And so this is um, our masculine, masculinity circle, so our engaging men and boys circle, um, you know, because we've been doing this work of gender justice and sexual violence as women speaking out. And we also know that a lot of that violence is directed to us from our own men, um, not just from the outside non-native people and society, but also from our own, um, our own family members, our own community members. Um, and so how can we engage them in not a call out culture and not a shaming way, 
um, but a way that really opens us up to having dialogue and that is real um, and that holds that what I call or what um, we call that loving accountability and responsibility towards one another. Um, which is a core value of ours, you know, that we always come from our heart, that we attach our heart to these different issues, um, and that we speak from our heart in that grounding place. Um, and we know that love isn't just, you know, squishy and all of that, it's also firm and hard. Um, and so, you know, how do we continue to hold this accountability and responsibility to one another? And then our state partners. Um, again, this is a group and the engaging men and boys is also a group from local to national um, individuals that are doing this work in our community or that are trying to figure out how to do this work in our community. Our state partners are those that are doing um, work on reproductive justice, environmental justice, um, issues with a broader base. Um, and so we have, uh, I think a really strong history of networking and reaching out and building our relational activity um, with these organizations. And so um, we have that circle. I'm trying to see how I'm doing on time and also try to slow down. <laughs> um, so healing justice in our national partners. Um, so we've been doing this work, environmental justice, reproductive justice, gender justice um, on our local community-based level in Rio Riba County, Española, one of the poorest counties in the, in the state of New Mexico, um, with, our with our indigenous communities, the eight northern pueblos um, in, in New Mexico, and then having this connection to these national organizations that are convening people on a national level, um, multiracial, multicultural, um, organizations and so we have some representation from the Hmong community, the African American community, and they're also represented, you know, our multicultural, multiracial lens is also incorporated in, in all of our circles. Um, we don't necessarily have a strong Hmong population here in New Mexico and I feel a really kinship to um, the Hmong Women's Association um, and led organizing, um, organizing for API and, and um, African American communities um, and really looking and diving into that anti-blackness um, as well as Sister Song, which is a, a reproductive justice organization that we've been involved in since um, their, their formation really um, as part of the management circle and also just maintaining that connection um, around reproductive justice issues. And, um, oh yeah, so I forgot, I need to go back and my notes are in this. So what are the themes that are coming out of, um, out of these circles is, um, I mentioned vulnerability, so really embracing, I'm sorry I had to go back because my notes are in the slide thing, um, is about embracing vulnerability and not looking at vulnerability as a weakness, but as a strength. Um, we, if you've ever read Brene Brown um, and other researchers that talk about vulnerability, it's about that ability to maintain that softness um, and authenticity to, um, and to those par parts so that we're not armoring up and shutting people out and closing down. The way trauma works is sometimes it, it isolates us, um, it hardens us, um, and we want to be able to maintain that vulnerability, touch that softness, come back out. Um, so we call that being ha in our traditional way is like touching the heart, right? Your breath with your breath and all of these things. Um, to be courageous is one that's also come up um, because these conversations that we need to have within our families and our communities um, need us to be courageous to do them. Um, to say that you've harmed me and caused me harm um, and I want some accountability and this is what accountability looks like for me. Um, to change patterns in our own behaviors of maybe substance use, maybe use of violent language, um, all of that takes courage. Um, and so we need to be able to practice having courageous conversations with each other. Um, we need to do this in an organizational level, in an interpersonal level, in a societal level, um, and it's not easy. 
um, and and it's and it's difficult, and we need to have that ability to do that. Um, laugh and play. So we know that part of trauma takes away, um, you know, the pain that you're in, the sadness that you're in, um, these real mental health um, chemical releases in our body. Um, and so, how can we? bring back play and laughter in our work. And as indigenous communities, I think we do have that tie to humor um, and the way that humor moves us um, with our, our different societies that are uh, hold that also responsibility for that humor and, and lightness in our community, but also lightness that also touches on the, the, the dark and the deep stuff. Um, and as a survivor of child sexual abuse, you know, I can speak to how trauma has impacted my ability to really um, remember kind of what childhood was like and um, reclaim a lot of that childhood, um, which is, you know, how do I bring more laughter and play and joy into my life? And part of that is like letting go of the pain and letting go of, of these things. And so in our Tewa way, being fa ma peri is that letting go, that releasing um, so that you're not holding on and, and having it come, cause these repressions and, and other aspects. And I am not an expert on trauma and its impacts in general, just on my personal experiences, but I feel like I've been able to travel in the place of like not having these memories of my childhood and being really angry and and hurt that I that I don't have, you know, these joyful memories that my siblings may have, um, but also at the place of accepting um, that and letting that go of the anger. And so I feel like, again, those transitions that we move through in our life and around the acceptance and the letting go are also lessons that we're learning in this journey of activism, in this journey of racial, um, addressing racial justice, addressing these different um, violences and traumas. What's also come up in these conversations and framework is um, how do we create spaciousness? Um, in our lives and in our work. And I remember in my early years of doing this, like our dinner conversations at my family table because of my parents, they're amazing, powerful people, but it would be really inundated with like, you know, the, the um, really activists kind of like, oh, this, you couldn't like watch a movie without dissecting it, right? You couldn't have a conversation without dissecting it and these implications. Um, when I really just wanted to hear how people's day was, like, did you enjoy going shopping? Did you enjoy, um, and feeling guilty because I couldn't just go and watch a show, um, and not have it be dissected for a lot of these different reasons, but be, being a way of escape, right? Um, which is also challenging in, in our society. Um, but how do we create spaciousness in our work? How do we create that spaciousness in our lives um, so that we're not facing these different types of burnout so that we are saying, I'm struggling right now, I need to take a break. Um, and then how do our organizations and communities respond to that? And as women, we know we have a hard time doing that of, of really um, putting ourselves first. You know, we feel guilty, we feel um, these different things in our family, like I can do this. Um, and then we come with these different aches and pains and resentments and energy zaps. Um, and so also recognizing that we cannot show up for our families or our communities unless our cup is really full. Um, and so how does that reciprocity work within our family dynamics, our community dynamics, and our work dynamics to ensure that that's happening? Um, and so we do wellness Wednesdays, wellness Thursdays, I think a lot of, um, and there's also this Healing Justice podcast that I hope I will send um, Elena the link so you can listen to around what what that means for us um, and then another theme that came up is really healing so deeply that the earth is cleansed um, and that came you know came through through all of these different circles the connection that we have to our earth mother um, no matter where we are in this world and in this country and that she gives us the gifts to heal and to cleanse and the cycles in which to do that as well um, she is one of the best teachers. Um, and as we look at our indigenous knowledge of those cycles, of those rituals, of those practices um, that really help us to do that deep cleansing and releasing. Um, the other was this professional and personal connection. Um, and, you know, people try to compartmentalize us, try to separate 
um, and there's a way that that can be healthy and, and not healthy. Um, and so really trying to think about how do we do this work in our communities that is so deeply personal and also deeply challenging um, if we cannot honestly have those conversations with our family members around sexism, if we can't talk in our tribal communities about patriarchy and heterosexism, um, and if we can't talk in other communities about anti-Blackness, our communities about anti-Blackness, because we have multiracial, multicultural um, marriages, relationships, um, re relational activity, um, and how do we not cause harm to our children um, by our prejudices and um, biases and things that we've learned and that internalized oppressions um, and really you know, being able to talk about that. So people also in this work talked about how do we commit to bringing more light into our work. Again, we're dealing with trauma, we're dealing with pain, we're dealing with deaths, we're dealing with grief and loss. And so how can we continue to shine hope and light into those dark spaces um, without dehumanizing each other, without harming each other further um, and talking about that. Um, and this is one, the other, this is one of the things that come up for us as indigenous people doing this work, um, is that indigenous people are going to save us. Indigenous people have these rituals and ceremonies and yes, we do, but every culture and every community has rituals and individuals are able to create their own rituals. It doesn't just lie the responsibility with one particular group or people. And so we've been talking about how can we co-create ceremony together um, as multiracial, multicultural, multi-issue organizers and people. Um, how can we, and we do that and we know that we, in our being as humans, that creativity is something that we need to nurture and that is there for us. And so this co-creation is always possible. Um, and I think in this stage in life and where others are at is how do we let go? How do we let go of anger, guilt, shame? How do we let go of these hurts and traumas um, and find those rituals that allow us to do that, find those ceremonies that allow us to do that um, collectively um, across, across all of our peoples? Um, the other one is the, and I feel like we're, you know, healing justice is not just a term that we you know, it's a term that came out of um, Black Lives Matter, the um, allied media um, social gatherings, and we're taking it, you know, they have a definition and we've added and added on their spiritual, right? So it's mind, body, heart, spirit. Um, and so, again, trusting in prayer, how, you know, the theme that was coming across these groups as well, also like trusting in prayer. How do we pray together and how do we not have that prayer be, um, go to like this religious aspect, right? But really that, that spiritual connection um, because religion can be this institutionalized oppressive force. Um, and we all experience that in different ways. Um, and then community accountability and community care. How does this self care also sh um, shine out into that community care, um, community accountability, community responsibility, um, not just the individual where individuals connected to the whole um, and so how do we continue to think about that in our work um, as organizers and community people? So I know I'm getting close to time. And so um, what we've came to in our TWU circle, right? Because we have justice sprinkled throughout all of our, all of our work is that really people landed on, um, they don't like the word justice. You know, we're limited in English to this term justice. Um, and, you know, it, it, people ask like, where is the love in that word? Um, it sounds like just us or just, you know, um, and so we are diving deeper into conversations around, is it liberation? Um, again, we're trying to do the best as multilingual people to limit it to this English language. Um, but what are the terms in our in our traditional languages or our mother tongues um, that speak to this in a different way than law than um, you know than this hard harsh 
system that other people have power in and we don't necessarily have power in. Um, and so, yes. So again, and then that just us can also be like, yeah, it's just us, right? As we're in this COVID moment um, where we're, we're challenging systems, we're wanting to defund the police, we're wanting to defund these different pieces, then it becomes just us, right? Like every one of us in this, in our community. Um, and so how can we begin to revision and vision and co-create different systems that bring in the healing that would bring in these different aspects um, that was shared in, in, in our talk. Um, and that really needs our ability to sit together, to com converse together, to dialogue together, to dream together, to pray together, um, so that we can think and open our perspectives to what other ways could be how can economies shift and change? How can um, systems that, you know, like police and others shift and change? Um, and how do we each play a role in that accountability and responsibility? And so um, I just, you know, think about all the stuff that floats around in my head and my brain and with our work. And um, my mom's always like, you know, just light the candle, burn the sage, pray, take that breath. So be the breath and be the light. Um, our communities and our families are our ancestors' greatest gifts and all their prayers, their strength went into us and that we can do it and we can do this together. And what COVID is showing us is that um, we need to be doing this together. Um, the, our diversity is our strength, our multiplicity is our strength and um, yeah, so I'll just end it there and see if there's any questions and answers or if my mom has any anything to add. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you wow. so much Thank for this. Thank you so Karine. much, Karina. I'm, I'm my my jaw's hanging on the ground right now. I you know, I was thinking one word, one word, Tosh. You know what? Compassion. Compassion came to me. We can't teach empathy because empathy is a shared happiness, a shared grief, a shared walk, a shared pathway. Compassion is just to go, hey man, teach me so I can know. And uh, that's what I heard tonight. So thank you, thank you. Thank you for teaching me so I can know a little bit more how to walk respectfully <laughs> in, in your culture. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kareen for the medicine and sharing what you have been doing and leading. You know, one of Corrine's opening words, well, actually several of them, was to be brave, to be courageous. And one of the things that I really appreciated, Corrine, that you shared about was in, as a collective, um, the importance of healing justice. How do we do that? And it's this collective, not sure what we're doing or where we're going, but in that trust. So the vulnerability, embracing that, you know, looking at our traumas, that last uh, slide that you had, looking at our story and then where our story is now, but doing it as a collective. So I just want to thank you so much and the deep work, not only that you've been doing, what you've been doing and leading and tell a woman united but within multiple communities because we're looking at um and all of our indigenous beliefs of connectivity unity we are connected to everything and everyone so i'm going to take this time and encourage people who are out in our zoom platform if you want to turn on your um your camera um, it's going to be I want you to take this time and integrate this incredible words if you've got any questions or you just need to process on these medicines of what uh, Corrine has said now's that time while you're coming back in and if you're on our social networks um, and you want to um, share something just pop something up on um, on the uh, social networks actually what are we looking at oh isn't that funny it doesn't want to go i was going to share a, a screen with um the work that we've been doing but it's not going so that's quite easy so uh anyway while you're um wanting to turn your camera on now remember we're getting recorded or you're in zoom and you want to pop something in the chat box 
whether it's something for Kareen or your own processes, because this is what it is about, being really vulnerable and this walk that we're doing together, you know, through our ancestors and for our future generations. But um, I just want to go into uh, what is happening at uh, in our Indigenous Ways virtual events. And on Friday, we have uh, Narissa Bond, and she is a wonderful black singer songwriter she's an activist she's an educator she comes from a family her mom's like a retired principal from some big school and she just she she she's a very well informed woman and she writes accordingly and she's got a beautiful voice and this woman uh sings anywhere and everywhere uh she we've had her here for some a virtual concert a live concert here and uh, everybody loved her and we are so blessed to have uh, following Narissa next Wednesday, Wednesday we have Tokala Two Elk, and uh, Tokala Two Elk comes from the Lower Brule uh, uh, Lakota tribe out of South Dakota, and uh, I've heard a lot of good things about Tokala Two Elk. Our sister Jennifer Forrester urged us to invite Tokala onto our uh, platform, so uh, we need to make the balance happen with uh, brothers and sisters, uh, elders and. Uh, ancient youth, when I say ancient youth, I mean young people with old souls, like uh, a lot of people I know out there that are millennials and doing the walk right now today. So uh, we're very grateful. And uh, and so the, all these uh, series are possible because of the sponsors, First Peoples Fund, the City of Santa Fe Arts and Culture Department, the National Endowments of the Arts, the New Mexico Arts. and specifically for the wisdom circle we've also got the sponsors uh, national endowments of humanities and the new mexico humanities council so we're very grateful to our sponsors also to our board members our indigenous ways board members some of them are on the line tonight thank you for your wonderful uh support and also our individual donors and uh, speaking of our individual donors, our last trip to Black Mountain, also known as Black Mesa, uh, the three communities up there, which uh, my people come from. Uh, my grandmother was born there. My mother was born there. Hi, mom. Mom's here tonight. Um, this was our last trip. And this is our garage, the top, the top uh, picture of just sorting the day before last Monday. And this is one of two U-Hauls that we rented uh, to take up. We had five cargoes full of goods to take up and you see some of the trucks lined all the way down. We were able to give out to 52 families lots and lots of good stuff. Everything from cleaning supplies to tin meat to uh, canned goods to cleaning supplies, tons of cleaning supplies, masks and etc. etc. We had a fabulous team of uh, volunteers that put it all together Phenomenal. the day before from the goodness of their hearts mm -hmm. that really really care about our elders on black mountain of course there's all ages up there but mostly elders and uh, we also are uh, very grateful for our next run and this is one of our beautiful elders uh, down below her name is jane Ballou with her husband and her daughter uh, might be on tonight uh, lynn dean she's a chr worker chinley health representative so she's uh, our 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 person that we're going through to get our next run up, which is going to be two weeks from uh, yesterday. We're going to be driving back up to Black Mountain, and this time it's going to be all cleaning supplies. Uh, we are requested, uh, it's called the Navajo uh, Nation Elders Run, July 14th, and what's really, really, really needed up there is cleaning supplies. So uh, Clorox, bleach, wipes, sanitizers, all that kind of stuff we're going to be accumulating. Water is always welcome. And uh, we're also going to be taking some uh, briefs, adult briefs, also known as pull-ups. Uh, mostly medium, mostly large and extra large, I would say. It says small and medium, but I would say if you're going to be donating briefs for adults, pull-ups, do large and extra large and just drop them off. So uh, one of the things that um, we're going to be doing, it's only been through the goodness, particularly with what we're in a pandemic, but uh, one of the things that we've been very deeply touched by is the generosity from the community. So a lot of people have come by and dropped uh, goods at our door. Um, people have donated online. If you want to donate, you are able to donate. Here's all the links here. You can go to our website 
indigenouswaves.org donate. There's a postal address, um, snail mail, if you uh, want to do that. Uh, but we've changed our date from the 11th of August only because of what's going on in Arizona and the spike. And before we go on to that, I want to say one good bit of news, everybody, and I hope Lynn Dean's on tonight. Black Mountain, COVID camps, where we're going, where there is no running water, guess what? There's no more COVID on Black Mountain as of today. No more COVID on Black Mountain. Let me repeat that. No more COVID on Black Mountain. People have died, people have lost their lives, and the people that have been infected and became sick have recovered. So we're gonna keep our fingers crossed and they've got some really, really tight restrictions up there. So this next trip up, it's just gonna be me and Elena and we're gonna go PPE as best as we can and just drop off with the CHR, no contact with anybody. We're just gonna do a drop, we're gonna turn around and drive out. I've got family, relatives, I've got a home site. I'm not gonna do any of that stuff we're getting out of there because we're not wanted. People from the outside should not be going in, but this is essential cleaning that it's desperately needed. So if you can help, please do. So we're concentrating on the 30 elders that are up there and uh, 75 plus still herding their sheep. That's what the umbrella, we've already got the 30 hats that uh, one of our members has kindly donated to. But in saying that, Arm we're hats. all um, back. And it's been a time to integrate in this credible medicines that uh, the beautiful Dr. Uh, Kareem Sanchez has shared with us tonight. We're gonna just leave this open um, to you. I know there's some people that haven't turned on their cameras in Zoom, which is great. If you've got any questions or comments, put them in the uh, chat box. Um, and the same with social networks. But does anyone well, who's here wish to uh, have a comment or a question or just processing uh, this incredible amount of information and uh, incredible work that uh, Kareen has been doing. Hi, Kareen. Hi, Teresa. How are you? Hi. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say hi. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for all your work. Really appreciate it. And nice Thank to see your face. <laughs> Thank you for your energy. So Teresa and I are connected through the child sexual abuse work um, right. and transformation and healing on that. So great to see you. Yeah. Carry Thank on. You. It's so great to see you. Hi, girls. Hey. Hey, Corinne. I want to say hi too. Thank you so much for your your very. Hi. I am always so impressed with how informed and prepared and knowledgeable you are of what you present and just the heart that you put into it, the heart and soul. So it really touched me. And I really like about how you touched about how as women that we have a hard time thinking about ourselves first and caring for ourselves, you know, that we're always like, you know, just trying to take care of others and that nurturing spirit that we have and just finding the time for the self-care and finding the creativity you know giving our time for that creativity so we can really expand within ourselves you know how important that is and i'm really glad that you reminded me of that because i'm feeling pretty wasted and i'm just like i i realized i just needed to hear what you said tonight and thank you so much thank you thank you missy we love you Thank you. Oh, see, there's my mama. Yay! Kathy, you taught her well. Kathy, Damn. you taught her well. Very proud. Thank you, everybody. Absolutely. For those people that are watching um, and who just came in, was the beautiful Elder Kathy Sanchez, which is obviously Corinne's mother. Uh, if you've come in, she was the first to hit off our wisdom circle. So if you haven't seen that, please go to the Indigenous Ways virtual events um, to see. I've got to say this, Elder Kathy, your archive video is the highest watch video in our archives. Um, just the medicine, the medicine about the butterfly yeah. uh, vision <laughs> people keep watching it over. Even we still see kitties and, and people that have been here. 
um, some people keep giving reference to that. So thank you so much, both of you, and the extraordinary work that you do as powerful, powerful women, just deeply, deeply touched. Thank you. Yeah, all. Thank, thank you, you all. Yes. Blessings. All hearts are needed. In yes. <laughs> Want to say anything, Jerry? <laughs> awesome. Oh, what a good faith is. Yay. Hello. Thank you for your talk. Um, whew. I'm still still coming through um, and and what taking place in a healthy way where where it uh, wants to go in my heart, in my mind, and in my spirit. And I still have chills from some of the things that I've learned um, and what Missy said, you know, to find the same thing. I feel the same way as well about um, taking care of the self and how this new form of thinking that had come through and has changed um, those automatic loving, caring thoughts that we were to have at birth and beginning and how that has changed. And oh, it just affects everywhere. And I'm here in the Northeast and I plan on coming back home to New Mexico where I'm originally from. And um, there's a part of me that feels um, not, still non-inclusive. I've been here 20 years and still it's constant, constant um, hierarchical type of thinking that um, pushes me out of where I don't want to be. And anyway, I'm processing that because it is apparent and I'm accepting it and I'm still growing with it. So um, thank you very much. It's a very, very beautiful words. Yeah. There's a hand raised. <laughs> Who's hand Sh raised? Shell. Shell? Yes. Hi, Dr. Sanchez. Hello, how are you? Are you in I'm New Mexico or are you still out there in Massachusetts or where are you? <laughs> I'm, oh, I was in Delaware, but I'm here in Santa Fe. And um, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm here in the area and I just wanted to oh. say hi and thank you for all that you do. And oh, yo. Make it There's short. Huh? <laughs> There's amazing people on here, yes. And all yeah. of you, I think, played an influential part on our growth and our being. And every, you know, I think that's the, the way that we collect our knowledge and our experiences is from people and those heart conversations. And yeah, and all of you here have contributed to that in, in our growth and reflecting on Tableman United, most definitely these Powerful, beautiful faces. So good to see you. I hope I get to see you in person with a mask on and social distancing. <laughs> and everything. I know. Send, um, invite me to a social distance feast, eh? We'll go to Tim's new house. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Lamb ribs for the Navajo. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> Amber or Kitty, do either of you want to share? Uh, otherwise, we're going to wrap up. And if there's any um, messages out there, too, um, on our meeting. I just want to say thank you very much for your the presentation is so thoughtful. And that sense of self-examination and what's necessary to be more complete. I, I just really, I really appreciate that. And I feel like I don't know. I think I'd like to say this and I hope it's not wrong, but I feel like in some ways the culture that I come from, which is the entitled culture and the culture that Geraldine is talking about, it, is not reflective in the way that, that you're trying to be and, and that your example for that is really very profound. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kitty. 
Thanks, that's, Kitty. That's Elena's best friend, Kareen. Uh, <laughs> Tasha always says that. The truth. <laughs> I'm not lying. Uh, uh, Gary's best friend, friend, Elena. Gary's my best friend. Hang on, Amber was just going to say well, something. I just want to say thank you. I actually have to get on another call, but I have so much respect for you, Corrine and Kathy. I haven't seen you guys in so long, and you're right up the road. Um, but what really struck me is just your your potent way of weaving magic and medicine into a lot of really practical information. I learned so much. I mean, I I chatted that to you, and I I just sent a chat to everyone. But it's you're such a such a profound teacher, and um, yeah, I'm just really grateful to be here, and I miss you. I want to see you. <laughs> I'm going to shout out. Amber does some really profound trauma work mm -hmm. um, in war-torn areas and is one of the influential people in our work. Um, so when you talk about you know, the different levels that trauma comes into our bodies, our mind, our spirits, the neurobiology and all of that, and um, just this ancient practices and knowledge that really go into helping us recover and reclaim and heal um, is a really powerful force on um, in communities in Aus Australia and um, Africa and other places and, and also here, right, in New Mexico. And we're really blessed to be in connection with you, Amber. So thank, thank you. you. Well, you thank you. And I want to do more. I want to do more with you and with Tewa. So, yeah. Yes. Right, time to break your arm. You can't go anywhere now. <laughs> I can't. I can't. So I had a face. I know we're out of time, Kareem, but what I was going to ask you is uh, to talk to uh, the coronavirus, but we got to go. Thank you, Amber. Look, um, <laughs> let's take this time, and as we're all here, looking at the healing of the justice of what uh, Kareem was talking about, planting those seeds, a lot of you are doing them in your reflective work, sharing that, sharing that, you know, being brave, being courageous. But thank you so much, everyone, for being brave and getting on tonight, turning on your cameras to be vulnerable, to share from your heart. That's the medicine and the healing, and it takes a lot. But you planting those seeds, you know, and for those people that watch it, is, is the start of building and co-creating this utopia that we can't even imagine. As like Corrine was talking about, we're doing this, but I'm not sure what we're doing, but we're doing it. And we saw the little excerpts of what people were coming up through their creativity, the conversations, hard conversations. So with that, I love this you, would not Mary. be possible, not only without all of you, but without the wonderful Dr. Corrine Sanchez from Tewa Waterman United. Let's give it up for her. Baby Corrine. You, we love you, we love you. We'll see you on Friday for Narissa Bond. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Have interpreters. A great good night. Thank you, interpreters. Thank you, Corrine. We love you. Touch the earth, touch the earth. Touch the earth.